QTEs. <sighs> They sure are a thing. It's an almost universally hated gaming mechanic, which is now utterly rife in the medium. Now, not to act in their defense, but I do understand why they're used. To give the player an iota of agency when something super cool is usually going on in the background. But as an actual gamer, I honestly can only think of a handful of times where it's been used well. More often than not, I've been watching a long cutscene and decided to myself that it's a good time for a bite of my bacon, peanut butter, and chili sauce sandwich, aka the mother's ruin, and BOOM! Press X to not be flattened by a rock flashes up and I become a spider of flailing limbs and condiments. For the entries on this list are not only awful implementations of the mechanic, but are also responsible for tarnishing the overall flow of great games. With this in mind, I'm Jules of WhatCulture.com and these are 10 quick time events that ruined great video game moments. Number 10. Fighting Le Paradox. Sly Cooper, Thieves in Time. Now, I wish this series got more love. Despite four excellent titles and a much pined for fifth installment of the game that got canned, Sly never truly managed to get the mainstream attention he deserved. With its mixture of stealth and platforming with a super fun and colourful art style, those that did delve into Sly's escapades found enjoyment for days. That is, until the end of the fourth game, Thieves in Time, where the final boss is reduced to a QTE. Now, before this, all other bosses have arenas based around whichever time travel power suit that they're wearing. Therefore, the logical progression is that the final boss will be all of these abilities in one. But no, instead of a challenging boss fight, all we got were a few taps as the last moments we'd ever get with Sly. Number 9. Paying Respects. Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. I mean, this moment was pretty much all anyone was talking about on this game for a while. And before you start whining about how Advanced Warfare wasn't a great game, you're entitled to your own opinion, but this opening section was well paced, and apart from this one little QTE, was fairly immersive. Yes, we all know what I'm on about, the infamous press X to pay respects. It was so unnecessary and so poorly done that it took the internet by storm. There's not much more to say on this other than it was as dumb as it sounds. Number 8. The Final Boss Fight. Mercenaries 2. The Mercenaries series was about freedom. You were free to blow up boats, cars, buildings, and everything in between. So what better way to go against this ethos than to make your final boss fight revolve around a constrictive QTE? The worst thing was that it was actually quite an infuriatingly difficult QTE as well. It sure as hell looked epic, but my god was it disappointing when you had to do it time and time again if you messed it up. Unless your game is built around moments like this, just like Until Dawn, then leave it the hell alone as this moment ruined the flow of the game and makes what should be an explosive climax feel like a dribbly discharge. Number 7. Vass. Far Cry 3. God, Vass was great. In fact, I so looked forward to encountering this psychopathic mouthpiece that I swear it's as close to Stockholm Syndrome as you can get in gaming. Throughout the game, you get up close and personal with this mohawked madman several times, and each will leave you feeling quite shaken. His combination of physical threat and powerful command of the English language made it so that players yearned to finally face him one-on-one. -on -one. This setting of his encounter was insanely promising as well, being a fusion of drug-fueled dream world and Jason's fractured mind. As we chased down the ever-elusive vast attention built and built, but was squandered when all we got was a weird corridor of clones and then a single button prompt to take down one of the most charismatic villains in decades. Much like my lovemaking, it was all build up to a huge disappointment. Number 6. Race. Dying Light. So you might be seeing a little pattern here, that a lot of these entries are final bosses who, for some reason or another, developers didn't trust us to beat. Yet, while the concept might be the same, they're all on here for several different reasons. Enter Race the final boss of a game which encouraged freedom of movement, tactical thinking, and using your environment to your advantage. And yet, what we get as we ascend to one of the tallest buildings in the game is a QTE boss fight with more forgiving time windows than when I forget to call your mum after our first date. She'll take me back. She knows what I'm about. It's not even a fight which deserves to be in button prompt form, as the actions could have easily been replicated in a straight-up fight. It's a shame for a game to end on such a damp brown note, when up to this point it was all flips and shit. But there we go. Number 5. Fighting the Didact, Halo 4. Now, I might get a lot of flack for this, but Halo 4 was not my favorite in the line of games focusing on the big ring thing. That being said, the story was a really nice slice of corrupted emotional pie, and I enjoyed the tale of Cortana and the Chief coming to terms with having to bid each other farewell, until she was bullshittingly brought back in the next game undoing all the emotional weight of this scene. Anyway, back on track, after Cortana has given her cocktease of a farewell, you have to fight the Didact, aka the most boring robot alien in existence and you do so fittingly
unrelentingly in the most boring and illogical way. Halo is a first-person shooter, not a first-person push left stick to climb and then another button to slap a bomb to his chest and then watch him fall off the ledge in an incredibly underwhelming fashion shooter. It ruins the flow and completely usurps the gameplay the series is known for. Number 4. Jason! Heavy Rain You know what, I actually wrote something much longer explaining how the smorgasbord of QTEs in Heavy Rain does weigh on the positive side just, and how there's quite a lot of them that are terrible, but you know what, f*** it. Here's a compilation of him screaming Jason, because that's funny and also sells my point. Jason! 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 Number 3. Too many times, Tomb Raider. So as Tomb Raider grew as a franchise, the use of QTEs grew as well. Hell, Tomb Raider Legend even made it fun failing QTEs because of the humorous ways in which you could see Lara get crushed, eaten, or simply lost to the nether. However, it was in the Tomb Raider reboot which saw the devs go overboard and over the top with their QTE love affair. If they were limited to massive set pieces, then fine, I can accept that. Yet button prompts were used to scramble up walls, or you had to mash buttons to escape a beating. Almost around every corner, there was a stale Q QTE to combat with. These are instances in the game where you really don't need to be hammering buttons. It doesn't add dramatic tension and it actually highlights the dull and meaningless action you're actually doing. And trust me, we will be returning to this point soon. Number 2. The Showdown with Sauron Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor. This, for me, is the paramount of lazy endgame bosses, as it takes all the issues that we had before and combines them into one bastardized mess. So Shadow of Mordor was a great game, well written, supremely enjoyable to play, and I personally loved the Nemesis system as it could provide players with challenging sub-bosses that felt personal to them. So after all this love that's clearly gone into the boss system, how does Sauron play out in the end? I mean, obviously it's a QTE and I'm leading you on with this statement, but it was really really bad. You'd gone from taking on an entire fortress of orcs, slaying their captains, stealthing through dangerous encampments and successfully taking down the big evil set of swinging burly bald henchmen, all to be rewarded with this. What a letdown. And number one, opening doors, chests, ventilation shafts, everything. Okay, here we go. The controversial point and the number one spot. So settle in as we're going to slow it down a bit. So I've got no issues with QTEs per se, as I mentioned before. I feel when it's done right, they can create tense moments of action, which while wrestling direct control away from the player, also allow for set pieces which go outside of what a player can actually do. Uncharted is a perfect example of QTEs done right. Hell, even the Walking Dead games get a huge pass because it's built into their core gameplay mechanic. What I will not abide by, and neither should you, is thoughtless implementation of button prompts. Not just those times where it comes out of nowhere leading to a game over, but the times where it's required by everything to do the most banal of tasks. I don't want to time presses to open a door, or mash a button to pull a vent off. These do nothing for the game, add nothing to the emotional or narrative state, and are just a waste of time for all involved. Now, you might feel differently, and you know what, f***ing bully for you, mate, enjoy your life, top props to you, but can you really say that you enjoy the act of opening a door? Can you really say that your gaming experience is heightened by mashing a button to do something which should require no effort? Can you tell me that it's immersive and worth keeping in games? Yes? You, you can? Okay, bud, well, you have another sip of your bleach cocktail because you're clearly on another level. And that's our list. Got any other times that QTEs ruined gaming experiences? Well, let me know about them in the comments section below. And why not swing by whatculture.com for more news and articles like this every goddamn day? As always, I've been Jules, you've been awesome, and I'll speak to you soon.